Okay, good morning, everybody, uh, or at least good morning to all of those of you here on the West Coast. Um, um, happy lunchtime, I guess, to everyone who's on the East Coast, and good evening uh, to those of you uh, in Europe and the, uh, the European time zones, so including Michael, who's joining us today. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, um, this, uh, I, I'd love to welcome you to this, uh, this exciting webinar we have about um, scaling continuous software delivery, um, which is uh, an exciting new space that we're focusing on uh, in today's webinar. Um, just before I get started, um, just to give you a little bit of context uh, about, um, about Topio, uh, my company. So uh, Topio is a, a next generation um, business insights um, company. And uh, we're using uh, an AI engine to track um, many of the developments in the fourth industrial revolution. Um, and uh, one of the things that uh, you'll see us produce and is highly relevant to today's um, um, focus uh, is our ecosystem tracking. So um, and many of you may be familiar with these ecosystem maps. You may have seen them shared on social media. People love to have a look at them. Um, but essentially what we're doing is uh, we're, we're tracking all of the activity uh, in the fourth industrial revolution market segment. So let's uh, look at edge computing where we have uh, some of our most popular coverage. And, uh, you, you know, here you see the map for AI and edge computing. We also have one for um, uh, edge computing infrastructure, which I'll come to shortly. And uh, what we're doing is um, tracking all the movement in the market on a, on a daily basis, in, ingesting that and, uh, and producing it, um, uh, rendering it on the Topio Networks platform for, for viewing in, in, in a way that clusters that information and orders the information and makes it relevant to you. So in particular, um, we're, um, we're providing structure around the markets. Um, and uh, you know that that gives you the opportunity to view um, the market by certain subsegments and understand uh, how the ecosystem is fitting together and who's interacting with who. So uh, at, the, at the first level, there's there's the landscape maps, um, um, and then when you look at this on a more sophisticated level, if you think of this cube here, this stack as a stack of landscapes, what we're doing is also tracking the interaction between those segments. So if I were to, to look here on, uh, on the edge computing slice, which is in the middle of that stack, you can also see that um, we're tracking the vertical markets on this on the left hand side of the, the stack there, the oil, gas, agriculture, etc., and also use cases. So if you were to split out you know, one Lego block out of this stack, um, you know, we could help you understand exactly what's going on uh, in the segment around um, uh, IoT uh, asset management in manufacturing, for instance. So if we split out that Lego block out of this stack of Lego blocks and we could show you exactly what's going on there. And then, um, you know, obviously we can help you understand uh, how that uh, how that relates to your market, which markets are rising and falling, uh, what your interaction is with the, with that market, and so on. So, for that sort of sophisticated level, is part of our advisory service. But at a basic level, the the previous slide I showed you, that's part of our um, um, apologies for the disruption of of the uh, the, uh, the formatting here. I hadn't picked up on on, on that, but um, but uh, you can you, you can see. Um, uh, at, at, at a basic level, on the landscape level, you can access all of that information on the Topio Networks platform. So if you've registered um, for this webinar, you can actually access it for free if you go to topionetworks.com and look at the edge computing landscape. Um, you can actually see um, information around the uh, 1,300 companies and terms that we're tracking with the edge computing within the edge computing space. Uh, all of that basic level information is available completely for free. We're tracking news, uh, which is updated daily. We're tracking um, deals, investments, uh, a whole range of different areas, but particular, in, in particular, you know, the market segments and how they relate to each other. Um, so, you know, the way you might engage with Topio is by access, accessing that free information. As I mentioned, we also have um, higher level, more sophisticated 
uh, in market interpretation, which is part of our advisory service. Uh, and then, you know, we, we can also um, help you with thought leadership and, and access in the market. We have about 1.2 million people who are engaged with the, plat with the platform in various ways. So, so uh, thank you. We go to the next slide. That's a quick overview on, on where we are and what we're doing. Um, and then um, just moving to next slide, please, Michael. Moving to today, so so that's me on the left. I'm, I'm Gavin Whitechurch. I, I head the edge practice at uh, at, um, at Topia Networks, and I'm also co-founder, CEO. And I'm delighted to be here with uh, Michael Rakalenko, um, who's a product manager for IoT. So hey, say hi, Michael. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Uh, we've got a really interesting uh, topic today, and it's uh, one that's, um, you know, it's about an emergent market sector, which we see as high growth. And uh, and I just want to talk uh, about that a little bit. So uh, I mentioned the edge landscapes earlier. This this is the edge computing uh, landscape as it relates to, to infrastructure. And as I mentioned earlier, um, this is, um, it's essentially an abstraction of the information that's available in the platform. So um, this gives you a kind of uh, overview, and you can see all the logos here. Many people like to see which companies are in which segment. I have to tell you, these are just the logos here are just representative because, I, as I mentioned earlier, there's over 1,300 companies have been tracked in this space. Um, if you um, download the PDF um, from the uh, or go to the PDF, which is in the the Tokyo Networks platform, you can click on each of these spaces, and it will take you to actually where there's many more companies um, shown in each sub-segment. But the important thing here is to realize that, um, you know, this is a, a structure. If you look at the bottom um, of the, of the uh, diagram in the, in the gray segment, you can see that uh, we're tracking from the right-hand side, uh, the access and, and regional um, edge um, through uh, on things like on-prem edge, right down to the embedded edge on the far left. And the boxes are lined up above that to, uh, to, to to show where the players are in the market, where the software players are, where the hardware players are. And this is actually a, a taxonomy that, you know, it's a it's an evolution of our taxonomy. We've been tracking edge computing now in this way for over three years. And um, we evolved the taxonomy this year in harmonization with the Linux Foundation and work with actually the, the chair of the board of the Linux, fan, uh, the Linux Foundation's um, LF Edge to uh, harmonize this taxonomy with their um, open taxonomy um, so that there's a commonality in the language uh, around the marketplace. If you go to the next slide, um, this is actually the blueprint for the landscape. It's a little easier to, uh, to, to grasp. Um, and again, you'll see in the gray at the bottom that, that structure uh, around the marketplace. Um, now I mentioned it's um, harmonized with the Linux Foundation but it's, it's a living taxonomy and it evolves as the market evolves. And when we see um, activity in certain market subsegments that are growing, we reflect that market. So it's, it's driven essentially by the market um, in the sense that we, uh, we, we develop it and, and react. And when we um, see new markets developing, we, we call out those mar markets. And here I wanted to call out, um, this is actually the first evolution of that landscape, which we updated in uh, Q, our Q2 update. We update these quarterly. Um, and the new segment we introduced here was this um, software distribution sector. So this is, you know, this is really interesting because it's, um, if you're not familiar with the space, I'd, I'd describe it as maybe CDN-like activity, but uh, uh, Michael's going to tell us a lot more uh, about this. So, um, because we'd identified half a dozen um, companies that were in this high growth space and very excited to have all with us um, uh, the expert from one of the leading companies in the space, which is Joe Frog. Uh, and, which is, and so Michael's going to give us a bit of a deep dive on this space and, and why it's growing, why it's significant, and uh, you know why it's um, such an interesting area that uh, you should be paying attention to. So, um, Michael, I'm going to ask you to take it from here. I'm really uh, excited about this. Just before we get um, get stuck in, so Michael's going to describe 
uh, what we're doing in, in this area. And then we also have a demo at the end, but we have plenty of opportunity for Q&A. We always love to, to hear from you um, in these, in these uh, webinars and we will take time to answer your questions. Uh, you can use the Q&A or the chat function you see uh, at the bottom of your screen to ask those questions. And uh, I, I may pick out questions if they're relevant to what Michael is discussing at the time and just clarifying questions. So please feel free to ask as we go through um, and, uh, and uh, you know, ask as the questions come to mind. And then I'll, if I don't ask them as we go through, we'll ask them um, in a sort of structured way at the end and I'll cluster those questions together. And with that, um, Michael, over to you. Thank you, Gavin, uh, for the nice intro. So today um, <clears throat> we will be sharing our learnings and our work uh, in the space of software distribution and also explain what we mean by that and how all that enables continuous deployment in edge computing environment. But because but just before that, uh, for setting the context, let's, let's talk a bit about JFrog as a company. So JFrog uh, was established uh, 13 years ago in 2008. Uh, and today it's a publicly traded company on NASDAQ. The ticket is Frog. We have 800 plus employees. Uh, we're happy to have over 6,000 customers and we're very glad to have 75% of Fortune 100 companies using our products. Um, we're very fortunate uh, to have leading companies across many industries, like banks, uh, tier one technology companies, media companies, car makers, retailers, telecom, operators and more. Essentially, any company that develops software can benefit from our products. Our main product is JFrog DevOps platform. It's the most widely adopted DevOps platform covering all stages of the software and binary release management. Starting from the left side, um, the software source code is usually stored in some kind of a version control system like GitHub. And for most programming languages, the first thing developers would actually do with this source code is to compile this source code into a set of binary files, which represent a software version. And this is where JFrog platform comes into play, managing the whole life cycle of all those binary files and binary software versions. The software versions progress to the all stages of DevOps pipeline that includes building and testing, possible release approvals, and eventually those versions that pass all the tests and checks will be deployed in production. So the JFrog platform allows developers uh, to manage binaries along all stages of software, soft, of software release process, and more specifically, Artifactory, which is the centerpiece of the platform, stores and manages the life cycle of binary artifacts like packages and container images, um, uh, X-ray scans binaries to clear security and compliance issues, and distribution, which is going to be the focus of our discussion, is used to move those binary software releases to a, wide, to a very wide range of deployment targets, including public cloud platforms, on-premise data centers, regional sites, branch offices, IoT and edge devices. In summary, JFrog offers an end-to-end -end DevOps platform for managing lifecycle of binary releases from code to deployment to production. Michael, um, Sayed yeah. is asking, does that mean you, you provide the same functionality as GitHub? So. Um, well, we are focused on managing the binaries. And the story here is that Usually for most languages, as I mentioned, the first thing that is happening um, is compiling the source code into binary files. And those same binary files first compiled during the build process eventually will become part of those releases that actually run in production. This is the main difference um, and, and the main differentiation of what JFrog is doing. We call this whole approach BinOps. Fantastic, thanks. Um, so, um, 
As I mentioned before, distribution will be in the focus of our discussion today. And so it was to explain in more detail what do we mean by that? What is software distribution? In the very basic terms, software distribution is all about moving software binaries from where they were built or created. This is developers or CI platforms to where the software op operates. In other words, the runtime. And as I mentioned before, there are many different kinds of runtimes from cloud platforms to on-prem data centers and all the way to small devices. Software distribution is a key part of any large-scale continuous deployment solution. And while in small systems, software distribution is fairly straightforward, in larger systems, achieving reliable, secure, and timely distribution of software releases quickly becomes a big challenge of, of its own. And this is what we learned from our interactions with many customers that are talking about this issue. So the challenge is uh, how, do, how do you distribute binaries to thousands of servers, pod, and edge nodes? How do you deal with multiple cloud platforms and regions across the globe with all different regulations and issues. What happens when you need to support hybrid on premise and edge deployments and, and often all at the same time? And plus consider that all this need to happen very quickly because this is defines the speed of your software, software delivery and deployment and also frequently. And for some customers that means daily. IDC says that the failure to address distribution challenges can become a major risk to businesses. So this is what we call software distribution, basically moving binaries from where they're created to where they're used at large scale, securely and reliably. The challenges that I, um, that I started to list uh, in the previous slide only promise uh, to become bigger in the future. Enterprises expect that their software evolves continuously and therefore want to update production more and more frequently, all the way to several times a day. At the same time, binary artifacts are growing larger. Over three quarters of businesses will be using containers by 2024, and container images, as all we know, are typically quite large, measuring hundreds and uh, in hundreds of megabytes and often gigabytes. Moreover, computing infrastructure becomes more and more complex by itself uh, with hybrid and multi-cloud strategies, adoption of edge computing, and also IoT devices. This is why we listened to our customers and created what we call j distribution, which is an integral part of j platform. It frees developers, DevOps, and SRE teams to focus on their applications rather than solving difficult software distribution challenges. Now, some of you may be asking, but what about CDNs? Uh, can they solve the challenges of software distribution and scale? To answer this question, let's compare content distribution networks with solutions that were designed ground up uh, for distributing software binaries at scale, like j distribution. So first of all, a CDN usually is a separate thing from your DevOps pipeline. You have to, to procure and manage that separately from your pipeline, with probably different teams even. Whereas in j distribution, all issue um, of all issues of software distribution are integral part of the DevOps pipeline itself. CDNs are usually stop at the metro level. They can bring or cache your binaries at some, some specific metro locations. With j distribution, you can go much, much more deeper. You have uh, you can have your caches installed on your production flows in medical clinics hospitals, fast food restaurants, and more. CDNs usually optimize to work in cloud environment, uh, whereas j distribution um, is, um, is designed to operate in mixed runtime environments, meaning that we can easily support on-premise and hybrid deployments. Going a little bit more technical, uh, CDNs were designed to solve 
web applications and basically provide an infrastructure for HTTP downloads. But if you look at how packages work or software packages work, uh, there are package specific protocols that need to be supported in the cache itself. For example, Docker protocol. And we already do that for Docker, obviously, uh, and many other type of packages. Uh, CDNs usually handle individual files, whereas our solution handles collections of binaries, which constitute a one coherent release. And uh, what you usually get from CDN is a download statistics. Uh, whereas with JFOG distribution, you will know what is running where, which we call deployment tracking. So I hope that answers this question how um, JFOG distribution and JFROG private distribution network that will, I will describe in a minute compares to CDN. And the need for software distribution is well established and understood in the data center environment. It is equally important for all segments of edge computing continuum, including a service provider edge, on-premise, regional data centers, as well as smart and constrained devices. Obviously granted that the challenges for each edge segment can be different, but the overarching need of having software distribution as part of your DevOps pipeline holds for all edge computing segments. And if I may, Michael, I'll just add to that, that that diagram there is, is listed from the uh, the LF Edge pictorial, which is the, the same structure of the diagram that we showed earlier uh, from the Tokyo interpretation. Thank you. Thanks for that, Jim. Um, so we all know how different edge computing can be compared to a data center environment, and this includes uh, connectivity limitations, uh, which need to be dealt with, and the need uh, to manage devices remotely because there is no uh, skilled uh, workflows on thousands of edge sites. Uh, very frequently, uh, edge nodes are installed outside security perimeter and communicate with the backend of the untrusted networks. Um, we want uh, edge sites to continue to operate even when there is no connection to the backend or to the cloud. And obviously, scalability looks completely different to a typical data center environment. Um, so all that makes uh, the topic of software distribution to the edge quite substantially different uh, from how these issues are handled in the data center or cloud environment. Um, these are the main design considerations uh, for building a scalable, secure, and reliable software distribution solution that supports continuous delivery in edge computing environment. You wanted to be able to cope with the scale and high peak loads, um, which are characteristic of edge deployments. And this is best done using distributed architectures. The solution shall be able to maintain interdependencies between different components of a software release. A release usually contains multiple binaries, which all needed to be deployed at the same time uh, for the software release working properly. And this is achieved through what, I, what we call release integrity. Simply downloading gigabyte long binary files over unstable connections will often result in download failures. So you need to optimize the download procedure for network limitations, obviously. And next in line is that edge nodes are often installed outside of security perimeter, as I mentioned, and therefore need to be properly authenticated and authorized for accessing distribution services. And this is achieved by means of zero trust security model. Um, remote edge uh, sites might be able to operate when there is no connection to the cloud, as I mentioned before. To enable such a site to restart, to configure itself, um, uh, we should implement local caching or software binaries inside the edge site. And finally, and the most important, um, all these te technologies and solutions shall be native to your CI CD platform rather than being a piecemeal of separate solutions. Because if you have 
them separate from CICD platform or DevOps platform, management and creation of such a solution becomes a major issue. Let's dive a little bit deeper into each of these design considerations and to see how we're implementing them in J4 platform. Uh, so the way uh, we implement that in J4 platform is by means of a capability that we call private distribution network. Uh, it kind of rhymes with a CDN, a content distribution network, but uh, as I explained in previous slides, it, it can do substantially more than, than a typical CDN. And J4 PDN or private distribution network is designed ground up for large scale distribution of software artifacts. It is a distributed network that propagates software artifacts like software packages or container images from central artifactory through a multi tier topology of distribution nodes, which are by themselves organized into groups to increase scalability. Edge clients down below in the diagram are downloading software binaries from the closest distribution group. Distribution nodes are managed remotely uh, by the J4 platform and, and they report their status and metrics back to the platform which basically displays the status of the network, its life topology and how it works. Because distribution nodes share the load of many simultaneous downloads, they can be deployed on a commodity hardware and, and don't require high performance servers with large network capacity to support very large scale networks. Deployment and configuration is super simple. Uh, just define a parent, group name, and security token in the distribution node configuration, and we, it will automatically join the network. So, so this is the solution we usually recommend customers to deploy uh, when solving software distribution challenges uh, in edge environment. Uh, so let's talk next about release integrity. Um, a software release usually contains many inter interdependent components, uh, sometimes in thousands, which can run on servers, edge nodes, or IT devices, and all the components of the, of the release need to be deployed at the same time to avoid deploying incompatible components from different software releases. So how, how do you do that? In JFL platform, we achieve release integrity through use of a construct that we call release bundle. Release bundle is an atomic unit of software distribution. When you distribute a release, uh, you distribute a release bundle essentially with all the files it describes. And under the hood, a release bundle is basically a signed manifest that lists all the components of the release, all the binary files of the release together with all the metadata that, are coming, that is coming with those files. Once the release bundle is created and signed, uh, JFrog PDN or private distribution network propagates the release bundle together with all the files in the bundle to all distribution nodes in the network. This is happening fairly quickly. Each computing nodes can only start downloading specific components of the release when all the components of the release has a, have arrived to the distribution node and were validated by checking a release bundle signature. So all that basically ensures that the software release comes as an atomic block, and which has all the all its internal coherence and maintained throughout the distribution process. Connectivity, or other limitations of connectivity, in the source is the source of numerous complexities in edge computing, and more specifically, downloading large binary files that can measure in gigabytes over unstable connections can take very long time and sometimes even forever. Add to this that often edge nodes are installed behind firewalls, uh, which block all incoming traffic. Um, 
So we deal with all that with a series of, of, mechanism and of mechanisms that optimize downloads and enable efficient distribution of large binary files across many, many nodes. First, large files are divided into smaller chunks, and each chunk is downloaded over a separate TCP connection. This reduces download time and also makes download less sensitive to connection errors. Secondly, in most cases, uh, new software releases only change several files out of potentially thousands of files in the release, on the previous release. So distribution nodes analyze the release bundle, um, the manifest of the release bundle, and download only new files that are missing in the distribution nodes because previous release was already downloaded. Such incremental downloads drastically reduce the amount of bandwidth used by, used by new software releases. Next, distribution nodes are capable of downloading chunks of files from peer nodes in the group, further accelerating download. JFrog has developed an efficient and resilient peer-to-peer -peer protocol that is based on HTTP and GRPC uh, to uh, seamlessly support all that. Finally, the downloads are firewall friendly. Uh, as we know, firewalls are blocking incoming connections. And to, over to overcome this in JFrog PDN, connections are always established from the distribution node to the parent node. So from inside the firewall environment to, to the network, to the backend. And distribution nodes periodically poll their parents to download them for download notifications. And if there is a pending download, they will initiate download from the parent. This is how we deal with firewalls. Um, in edge deployments, um, distribution nodes are often installed outside of data center security perimeter and are connected to the backend over untrusted networks. And as a result, in edge software distribution, uh, we need to implement zero trust security model, which includes uh, authentication, authorization, and encryption of all the connections between the nodes in the network. Security is taken very seriously in JFOR platform in general and sp specifically in distribution. And distribution nodes of JFOR PDN always connect to their parents using mutually authenticated TLS connections. So everything is encrypted, obviously. And the authentication is done using industry standard security model using certificates for each distribution node. In addition, when an edge computing node wants to download the binary file from the distribution, distribution node, it must present a valid authorization token granting it permission to access the file or to download the file. Distribution node validates the token before allowing the download of the binary file. Um, so security is, uh, in our model includes all this encryption, but also um, authentication and full authorization of download plans. And finally, the last design consideration before we jump into the demo is local caching. Caching of software artifacts locally at the edge sites like hospitals, oil platforms, or fast food restaurants, and more has two main benefits. First, it enables autonomous operation of the site in the sense that the computing systems in the sites can be restarted and reconfigured even when there is no internet connection to the central, central repository. Uh, this is especially important when you run dedicated Kubernetes clusters in edge sites. Secondly, we can significantly reduce bandwidth requirements uh, by aggregating downloads of software artifacts. Now the artifacts that, are, that are, are downloaded only once instead of being, in, or being downloaded separately by each machine on the edge site. You can easily achieve this with JFrog PDN. Uh, just install JFrog PDN distribution nodes at every site or edge site that will uh, cache software binaries like Docker container, container images locally. And the local cache can be warmed uh, by proactively downloading the new software releases ahead of time, exactly as we'll see in a demo in a minute. 
once the cache is warmed, uh, local machines and, and devices in the edge side can download software binaries from the cache even when there is no connection to the cloud. Since the binaries will be downloaded only once and used by all machines in the site or many machines in, in the site, we will also significantly reduce bandwidth needed to update all machines of update software in all machines in the edge site. So those are the main design considerations uh, for creating secure, efficient, and reliable software distribution solution for edge computing. And uh, we'll jump in the demo now. If you have any questions, Gavin, it will be a good point maybe to answer them. Sure, after the demo or, or now? No. Yeah, there, there was a there's a question um, from Rob about um, kind of the embedded edge. So he's he's asking about with the increase of embedded uh, machine learning on device and along the edge, um, how you support this approach to implementation. Is is that something you do support, or uh, is it a, is it on the roadmap? Yeah. So um, so typically in in edge machine learning you need to download um, inference models from the backend into the edge devices uh, for them to make the decisions based on those inference models. And in, in most cases, those inference models are binary files, uh, which can be handled in a way similar to how they handle binary files of software releases. So this is indeed can be done with JFrog PDM. Fantastic. Okay, so let's let's go to the demo, and then I think we have a bit of time for Q and A afterwards. So, I have a few more questions I'd like to ask then. But uh... so um, let's talk about the setup and topology of the demo. Um, so, as we can see, we have three regions in the demo: U.S., Europe, and China. In Europe, we have two distribution groups, each having 120 and 80 nodes respectively. You see these numbers in the in the green boxes in each distribution group. In the US, we have distribution groups on the East and West Coast, as well as another tier for major cities on the coast. The clients that are using or consuming the binaries are downloading container images from the closest distribution group, uh, basically based on their location. So we'll do recorded demo uh, for the sake of time. Let me know when it runs. Okay, it runs. Okay. So um, we'll start the demo using uh, CLI because most of our customers interact with the systems through APIs. And the first thing is to create a release bundle uh, through this JSON file, which specifies the, the version, the name, and the, which files would need to be included in the release bundle. Now we pass this JSON to the system and it uh, basically creates the release bundle, which is a manifest of all files and, uh, and metadata, which belong to this release bundle. And each file is, is represented by uh, its, its checksum. Now we're switching to the UI. And as we can see, we have the release bundle with the same name as we defined in the JSON file, the same release, so it's 03. And this, uh, this release is not distributed yet, but before we distribute it, let's um, show that device in London uh, cannot download this version yet. So we are logging in to the client in London and, and um, this client is obviously consuming um, or should consume the Docker image from the local cache. You can see it's London. And we're requesting release 303, and obviously it fails uh, as expected because release 303 has not been has not been uh, delivered yet to London. Now we are hitting distribute button and uh, selecting which distribution groups we want uh, to receive this release. Uh, so you can see you can either select groups of distribution groups uh, or distribution groups individually. So we'll select Europe, US, and China, and uh, unselect California. 
We have about 600 nodes, distribution nodes in seven groups that will receive the distribution. Now we hit the distribute button and the process begins. It runs in parallel. So we see uh, that, um, that nodes are getting the binaries. Uh, Europe is done. Uh, Asia is done. US is coming along. Uh, okay, we have West and now East to complete the release process. So now all the content of the release has been deployed to all distribution groups. Now let's check whether we can download this release in London. We're running the same command and voila, now we have the, the Docker image from 303 release available in London. Um, Cool stuff. I'm trying to switch the slide, but oh, okay, now it works. So, in summary, uh, JFrog Private Distribution Network um, supports hybrid environment. And it is fast, efficient, and substantially reduces the load on the central central repository. It's massively scalable due to its distributed architecture. Um, it supports flexible network topologies uh, of, of working over wide area networks or local area networks as one. Um, it allows proactive deployment of artifacts ahead of time, which we call a cache warm up. Um, it's resilient and highly available, again, because of its distributed architecture. Um, it's, it takes it takes security very seriously, supporting encryption, authentication, and authorization um, fully. Uh, it supports containers, uh, both Docker and OCI containers, and other packages. Um, it also facilitates audits and, and regulation compliance by collecting logs uh, and download statistics from all distribution nodes in central artifactory. It has low TCO because of requirement uh, for, uh, for commodity servers. And in summary, uh, we believe, um, and this is what we hear from customers, uh, we're solving difficult issues uh, for distributing software to large scale systems, especially edge computing systems. Um, which uh, frees the customers uh, to focus on their application instead of spending time on putting together such solution by themselves. Thank you very much. Uh, it's time for QA and back to you, Gavin. Thank you, Marco. That was, um, that was fascinating. I love the demo. A very, uh, very compelling uh, that uh, you're so rapidly able to deploy at scale. Um, so just on that deployment then, I was, I was thinking about scheduling, right? So is it possible to schedule distribution of release um, bundles? So would you do that yeah. at the end or you know, certain times of the week or? Yeah, it's a good question. We're hearing this question frequently and the answer is quite simple. As I mentioned, um, most of our customers are using j platform through APIs. Uh, so you can use any kind of automation system to really schedule creation and, and also distribution of releases based on your needs. It can be daily, specific time, and at specific time of day, weekend maybe, or some other, some other schedule. So it's done fairly natively. Okay. And actually John is asking, are, are there any specific API calls and workflows for this kind of service? Um, not to sure understand the question, but um, you can uh, obviously use the API of the system with like usual tools like curl or just write scripts that um, will interact with the system. Yeah. Or do the integration with the common automation systems. By the way, uh, JFO platform includes pipelines, which are own automation solution, which natively supports um, distribution and PDN, which can help you to to create those pipelines in a visual way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so 
I hope that answers the question, John. Uh, uh, it's a good question. So let us know uh, if you want to rephrase the question if, there were, if there's more. Um, so he's, he's saying, uh, is it only done via the platform I can, or can I use uh, an API, your API? Well, you, you need to have a platform to use its API. You don't have to use the GUI. You can use both GUI and um, an API, a command line. As I mentioned, most of our customers are interacting with the system through APIs. And GUI are obviously very good for demos uh, because they're much more visual. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, so John's happy with that answer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so uh, yeah, please feel to, free to ask questions uh, in, in the dialog box or in the, in the Q&A. Um, I, I had another one. Uh, so um, I know you've, um, JFrog recently acquired a company, AppSwift, which is, you know, it's an IT, IT device management company. So how does that fit into what you're doing here, uh, the, the, this distribution story? Another good question. Uh, so, um, acquisition of AppSwift, which is an IoT device management company, also supporting, by the way, software updates, which is the main uh, capability there, is a natural extension of what we're doing in bringing together the software distribution and making, and the DevOps and CI CD, making them live in the same platform. Basically, acquisition will allow 360 degree uh, capability from code to installing firmware in, in IoT devices, all handled in the same platform. Mm -hmm. So it's a natural extension for what we are doing and what we'll, I have presented in this presentation. Okay. So, so that's interesting. So, you, you, I mean, you've gone to a uh extended into the devices further and, and I know you know, exactly. I think it was uh, Rob who was asking you earlier about how you go further into embedded beyond, beyond that so you, you know is that a, a natural extension of the space uh, I guess that, that kind of speaks to where you see the space going in the, in, in the future yeah yeah what makes uh, the combined solution really unique is that not only you can go all the way to device and update software on the device, but this update process really becomes part of your DevOps pipeline um, with all the benefits that are coming with that. So it's not like a siloed process that managed separately. It's part of the same pipeline from code to having uh, the software deployed in the, in the devices and the status of this deployment being reported back and map to all the metadata which is collected in the platform. It's a really powerful concept and we will we'll be happy to talk about that yeah. um, in very short time. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. So um, so the, the nodes you're delivering to uh, and via, where, are you going, you're going all the way through to the, the prem or further into the embedded device and uh, you know, where does, where does the edge extend to for you currently? And, and, and do you see that kind of extending in, in the future? So um, with PDN or private distribution network, uh, we're covering um, edge sites uh, or large edge nodes that are having like powerful servers maybe inside and examples are multiple. It can be a hospital, it can be a manufacturing floor, it can be a, oil platform, but it also can be a robot uh, yeah. that has multiple controllers installed in it and they all may be running Kubernetes cluster and they all need caching of binaries inside those devices. So th this is PDN. And with acquisition of apps, we are going further down devices, being capable of updating individual devices and having all that scheduled and uh, managed properly in the platform. Excellent, excellent. So, um, okay, and um, I mean, regionally, where are you seeing the the largest demand for distribution uh, at, at the moment? I'm kind of curious as to where the the edge activity is as as, as you see it geographically. Yeah. So, um, distribution itself uh, as part of JFO platform. Um, is adopted fairly well in data center environment. And with PDN, we're taking that one step further 
Mm -hmm. making it applicable for like smaller deployment targets, including like edge sites and maybe branch offices. Mm -hmm. We're seeing um, that this system um, and this solution um, answers the requirements of several verticals, including retail and, and hospitality, some in banking, when people need to manage like branch offices, yeah, and also in healthcare, like hospitals and such. Yeah, that's interesting. And I mean, given the way the, your 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 service works here, I'm I was wondering if you had a feel for you know where where mo where more up nodes are being updated. Like, is it North America? Is it Europe? I'm just wondering if you know you get a feel for if different geographical markets are. So the US is leading the pack, obviously. Yeah, yeah, very strong. Okay, that's, that's good to know. <laughs> um, and um, I mean, are there significant differences between the requirements when you look into, say, healthcare versus retail? And you know, you know, I, I can see that banking and healthcare might have strong security requirements and so on. So, you know, or from your point of view, is is everything dealt with the same way? So um, BDN was basically born uh, from customer feedback uh, mm -hmm. because we saw uh, more and more frequently that that companies are dealing or struggling with these kind of issues, trying to solve that by their own, not having like off the shelf solutions. And uh, the solution today tries to cover all the bases for all different verticals. And in the end, we created like a package of all different technologies that address the challenges of most verticals, which I more or less presented as design considerations. These topics are kind of um, showing up in multiple verticals. Obviously, priority is a little bit different, but they're all present there. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And I think I've We've answered all the questions we've got coming live. So unless we have any other further questions, just last call for questions. Let's uh, let's start to wrap up. That was uh, really interesting. Thank you, Michael. Uh, if you if you move to the the next slide, uh, I just wanted to flag that we have um, oh, there's some uh, further resources here. Um, yeah. So if you would like to learn more about distribution network or private distribution network. Uh, you can go to jfrog.com slash pdn or just uh, sign up for a free trial of jeff or free trial of jeff platform which will allow you to uh, kick the tires and see how it works yeah yeah and um this deck will be uh, will be downloadable so you can download this and and go to the links and and, and collect uh, the information there and feel free to, to share that information um you know share the uh, address uh, of the uh the download to your uh, colleagues when we when we circulate that tomorrow. We'll send out an email to you tomorrow just to let you know where you can download that from. You and your colleagues can download that from, and the recording will be available there. And then um, it's actually we've got a fantastic um, period at the moment of of great edge webinars coming up. I, I can just announce a couple of them um, at the moment, but uh, I know of many more that will be dropping onto the event platform shortly um and uh in particular we're doing a series with aws which is looking at edge native applications and and so what are the demands of those applications what's the the best practice what are the best uh, um edge applications looking like um the, particularly around the the mobile edge computing wavelength um which is um you know in the, in the carriers network so uh, these are, are two of those but uh do look keep your eyes peeled for uh, a bunch more exciting webinars that will be um, launching uh, in the as the year comes up to a close. But um, before we get there, next slide, um, we'd love to see you at um, Edge Computing World, uh, which is just coming up in a couple of weeks now. And um, this, uh, this event is packed with uh, end user stories and case studies and deep dives into different verticals such as retail, healthcare, um, and uh, you know many of the markets that Michael was talking about. Um, we would actually we have two summits here that are devoted to industrial and one in infrastructure and one on manufacturing and robotics um, with you know end user companies smart cities uh, as well automotive 
and we're also talking about security and application management and edge ai um this event is is free to sign up to um there'll be many uh, several thousand people there and uh and it's possible to you know on the event platform to network to, to find people with similar interests and to, to set up meetings with those people so it's a great place for the industry to get together uh, even in a virtual environment so please do come and join us um, packed full of interesting content you'll see it all at educationworld.com and uh, just move into the last slide please do when you leave fill in your quality questionnaire we do love to hear uh, your feedback and your thoughts about uh, what you'd like uh, what you liked and maybe what you'd like to see us improve mm -hmm. uh, keep staying healthy out there and uh, we'll see you at, at, uh, at future events and uh, thanks again for your questions thanks Michael for that uh, really fascinating you and uh, take care, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.